Hey everybody and welcome to a new video. So in this one we are going to implement an emitter for our particles. So instead of having the particles just laying around all the time, like it was in the previous video, we are going to have them spawn from a single position in the world and from this position then they're going to be attracted to the target as they were before. As you can see I've also implemented that the particles are correctly sized according to their distance from the camera. So if the camera is farther away then they're small, if the camera is closer then they are bigger. Before it was not like that because we had to implement these in the shader. So we will implement all this stuff in this video. Let's go for it. Alright, so that's the patch as we left it in the previous video. And uh, let's go on implementing first what I said we would implement in this video, which is to make the size of the particles relative to the distance from the camera. So this is going to be easy peasy easy, because what we need to do is just to create a GGL mesh, just, just a simple GGL mesh, give it point mode circle depth, and then give it draw mode points, Right, so point mode circle depth, draw mode points. The point mode circle depth is something relative to one of the latest versions of Max. And then we create the message get GL3 shader. Connect it, and we get our GL3 shader. Now what we are interested in is to see how the shader, the default shader that comes with Max, which is this one here that the object automatically created in GL3, is to see how this object handles the size of the particles uh, in order to make them connect to the distance from the camera. Well, this is the line we are interested in. So the lines that say GL point size, equal point size and so on, we copy this line, we close that, we open the, both the shaders, so the, the TF shader and the render shader that, come, that came in the previous video, and we go in the render shader. And we go in the vertex shader. Yeah, where we say GL point size, we use the TF velocity W, which was basically the mass of our particles. So as we were doing it before, we were using the mass of our particles to set their sizes. Let's first pass this line that we just copied from the shader. So the line says point size, which is actually, uh, we can use our uniform U particle size. GL position dot w, which is basically the fourth component of GL position vector that comes out when we multiply the model view projection matrix by our position, right? And then it says if this is equal to zero, uh, then give us 0 0.0001, otherwise just gives us this value. This is just to prevent that the uh, particle size is going to be divided by zero, because in the case this is zero, then it's going to just give us a super small number. So basically it's dividing the particle size by the W component of GL position, which basically means how far it is from the camera, really. So we can actually comment this line out, can go into our patch, and as you can see, the particles became very small. So let's actually make them bigger again with our attribute. Great. So now you can see that when we go closer, they actually are bigger, and when we get far, then they get smaller, which was something that was not happening before. Great. So first part, solved. Let's actually go back one second in the shader because we actually still want to use the, 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 the particle mass. So let's actually create a variable and say particle mass is equal to this variable here. So the fourth component of the velocity, which is basically the normal buffer that we feel in the transform feedback shader. Let's multiply this by our particle size. Great. So now uh, we still have the difference in size of the particles according to their mass. Great. Cool. Let's now proceed to implement the emitter part. So let's go into our shader. And instead, this time we go into the transform feedback shader. Now let's make a little graph of how actually the emitter system works. Well, it works like this. Like at the moment, we got all our particles, right? They just chill around and do in places and do stuff. But uh, with the emitter system, Basically, we assign a value to these particles that represent their life, 0 0.3, 1, 0 0.5, and at every frame, we subtract a little amount from this life. And when this life reaches zero, the particles will spawn again, so the position of these particles will be set to a point in the window, and then they will start their life uh, starting from this point. Their life will be set again to one, they will start from this point and then they will go around still attracted from the target and, and do what particles do. 
I don't know if this is really a clear graph of what we're gonna do, but uh, it's not really complex from a um, logic point of view. So one thing we need is to have uh, a lifetime parameter that we need to feed back using our transport feedback system because we want to read it, we want to operate it, so subtract a value from it, and then we want to pass it back in um, as our input for the next frame. So if you notice, we are just using three values for the position buffer, but actually we could use four. So if we create this matrix just with four planes instead of three, now we're using this buffer as a vector four. We are filling this buffer with vector fours. So we can use the last component of this vector, the W of the I position, as our lifetime. Now, if you see that we are remapping the um, noise value from zero to one to minus one to one, and this actually we don't want for the lifetime because the lifetime is going to be between zero and one. So let's actually replace this JIT map with actually a JIT gen. Let's go inside this JIT gen. Let's switch the XY and Z, right? create a concat object so we're going to concatenate this y and z with uh, let's switch the w right and concatenate this with the w so we create a vector for with these three components plus this fourth component but these three components we want to remap between minus one and one so zero one minus one one with a scale from zero to one to minus one to one great so now the w is not affected uh, cool. So before we bang that, let's just go in the shader and do all the necessary passages. So now we want that this is a vector 4, as we said. I position is going to be a vector 4. This is perfectly okay. More than 4 you cannot have, but until 4 is perfectly fine. So we have to replace all the places where we were using this as a vector 3. Now we have to write that this is a vector 4, of course, also in the output. Great. So let's check what, when we are using the position. I position, basically. Let's create uh, a temporary variable. Let's call it particle position, which will simply be the position of the particle. So this is going to be equal to I position dot X, Y, Z. So we are creating this variable to have a bit clearer idea of what is what, because uh, Otherwise, we are always using i position dot x, y, z, and then we are confused. Sometimes maybe we write it as a vector 4, but actually it needs to be a vector 3. And then let's create a float variable. We call it lifetime, and this is going to be i position dot w, right? The fourth component of our vector 4, which contains a random number between 0 and 1 in the first frame of our transport feedback. Great, so let's see where we're using the i position. We probably just want to use the particle position, so here. And I think we are using that, let me close these function here and just uh, resizing them to be smaller so they don't take so much space. Yeah, exactly. We are using the I position also in the gravitational attraction force. Let's actually pass this as an input variable instead of just using the global variable. So back three, particle position, and let's replace this I position with our input variable. And we need to change it also here uh, when we just declare the function. So back three particle position because otherwise uh, it will give us an error because this function's declaration needs to be the same as this one with the same inputs. The rest I think it's okay. So let's check if this works. Let's go in our patch. It was anyway throwing us an error because of some stuff wrong with it. And uh, okay, so there's still an error. Let's see what is it. Too few parameters in function call, right? Because I never passed these. Uh, as the third argument for our function. So particle position, right? So let's save, let's go in our patch, see if this works, doesn't work. Actual parameter number one must be same time as formal out parameter. All right, yeah, that's true. Because we are actually uh, filling the four values of output position with actually just a vector three, which is wrong. So we have to assign O position X, Y, and Z to uh, the position plus the velocity and so on. And then we need to say O position dot W. So the fourth parameter is equal to our lifetime. So for the moment, we extracted the lifetime in the beginning of our code. We said, okay, lifetime is equal to the fourth component of the vector for I position. 
and now we set the fourth output component of our opposition to the lifetime. So we didn't touch the lifetime until now. Let's see if this is correct now. No, there's still an error. So I managed to still get an error. Let's see what is the problem. Uh, right, we're using bounce edges, which accept uh, actually a vector 3, and we're using a vector 4. So we actually need to say opposition.xyz here, because we are only interested about the position of the particle. The four parameter is actually the, um, as we said, is the lifetime. We could actually rename this variable to be i position lifetime. Yeah, let's maybe do it. So I position life to remember that the fourth component of this vector is actually the lifetime, right? So I position life, we need to replace uh, this name whenever it came out uh, and then also O position life. So let's check where we wrote O position and these must uh, be renamed. Okay, I think this was it, not sure though. So let's see if this works now. Uh, no, we still have an undefined um, I position, so let's get it right. So, I position, oh, this was I position life, uh, I position life. Okay, let's see if this works. No. Oh, yeah, sure, we need to actually change the name in our buffer here. Great. So, let's see if this works. Uh, we need to bang first. Okay, cool. Now it's working. So we satisfied all the requirements. We didn't do any error anymore. And now it's working. Good. So we have a lifetime running. Great. So now we have to say, first we have to subtract a little quantity to the lifetime at every frame. And then when this is, so let's create an if statement, if lifetime is less or equal than zero, zero dot, because it's a float, then uh, particle position, let's say that they're going to start from the center, they're going to be emitted from the center, like my example in the f uh, that I showed you before. So they will start at vector 300, zero, zero. so exactly in the center of our virtual world. And then we have to say that lifetime is equal to 1, so we kind of reset the lifetime. Let's make a little comment, reset the lifetime. And at every frame, we need to subtract a little quantity from lifetime. So lifetime minus equal, let's actually create it, this, um, this variable. Let's create this as a uniform so we can change it from the patch. So let's call it like u life sub uh, traction amount or something like this. Very stupid name, but uh, it's a bit unclear name, but uh, for the moment we'll do with it. U life life subtraction amount. So how much we are going to subtract at every frame to our lifetime, and uh, let's uh, use it. So at every frame we subtract equal this amount. Let's create the parameters. So to define it, so param name u lifetime. How did we call this thing? your life subtraction amount, right? This is going to be of type float, because it's a small number, and then we have to choose a default. Let's say a small number like 0 .0, 0 0.04 or something like this. This will give us a long enough lifetime. Then we could make all sort of clever stuff like uh, uh, just deciding a lifetime in seconds and then make a couple of calculations to derive the amount of life to subtract automatically. But uh, these are going, not going to do now. And then let's bind it. So bind param u life subtraction amount to program bp great so now it should actually work oh and i made a mistake here i call this flat actually it should be called a float and uh, let's see actually if we did everything that is needed for this code to work so if lifetime is minus less than zero particle position is equal to that uh, uh, but I put this thing in the wrong place because I put it under the, when the O position is already set, see with me, this should actually be right at the beginning after we declare particle position and we declare the lifetime. Uh, great, so let's see if this actually works. All right, so you can see that when the particles finish their lifetime, they're going to reappear from the center of the world instead of uh, just fluctuating around.
Okay, great. Um, as you can see, though, the particles have... Uh, they, they still have the original velocity they had when their life was over. So the velocity has not been reset, right? So if they were going at full speed toward, toward the right, then they will still go at full speed toward the right when they are reborn. And this may be something that we don't like. So we should actually reset their velocity, probably to zero. So we could do something like this. Let's get the particle velocity. Let's create another variable for particle velocity, actually. So let's call it particle velocity. And this is going to be equal to i velocity dot x, y, z. Because actually we are still, uh, we are also using the fourth component of the i velocity for the mass, right? You remember? So it will be better to create another variable for the mass as well. But the mass, we were only using it actually just to pass it to the render shader, so it's not so important. But uh, let's create this uh, other variable that contains just the x, y, and z component of the velocity, so the actual velocity. And then let's reset the velocity here in our if statement. So if the particle is dead, let's reset the velocity as well. So particle velocity equal back 3, 0, 0.0. Great, and now we need to replace uh, our uh, input velocity x, y, and z actually with our new variable, particle velocity. Great, and I suppose this is it, because we just use it to take in account the velocity from the previous frame. Great, so let's check. Right, so when the particles start their lives, they actually have no uh, velocity at all. So we have this kind of tentacle that just shoots straight to the target and uh, it's kind of an interesting effect there to say. It's like it's like a tentacle. Let's make the blending enable for the particles. Oh, that's pretty cool. Right. Uh, that's not exactly the look we are going for. I mean, if this is the look you are going for, then that's great. But it's not exactly the look I want to reach uh, in the particle series. So in the next video, we are going to see how we can assign to those particles um, a random velocity every time their life is over, right? So they will start the new life with a random velocity, which will make them much less similar to a tentacle and more similar to particles. Alright, so this was it for this video. I hope this was clear. If you have some questions, you can reach out to me on uh, my Patreon, link in the description. And uh, thank you very much for following the video and see you soon in another one. Have fun, chill back and see you soon. Ciao.